Another exercise we can use for upstrokes is to imagine that we have a drum on each shoulder. And when we hit the drum, we want to get the stick back, back as far as here, straight away. So that no stage does the stick go into the drum. It comes back, we want to bring it right back here. So these are upstrokes. So we play them from the upright position. So this is this is very good. It's, it's really hard on the forearms. You bring the stick back. You should really feel the stick hit the shoulder very close to when it's hit the drum. One movement. One. Another good way to get a nice rebound off the head is to actually practice on something that gives you no rebound at all. I find if you practice on something like a practice pad that has a lot of rebound, you get a false sense of bounce off it and you can tend to play things that when you come to actually real drum skin it's very hard to play. So if I was to practice on a snare drum I might cover this with a towel so we're not getting any bounce off this and actually force the hands to bring the stick back. Force the hands with the upstroke. Don't allow the surface to, 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 to bounce the stick back. Use it in conjunction with upstroke and surface, up it comes. Um, so as I was talking about the flams, flams are very good. So we can play flams in a triplet rhythm, triple stroke flams, three beats with each hand. And flamming the start of each three beats. And a three beat. So I went through a group of four there at the start, then I went into two, and then three. So you should play all that, four beats with the hand, two beats with the hand, three beats with the hand, allowing the stick to come back. Um, again, you don't have to play a flaming exercise. You can just play single exercises where we have to play three beats with each hand. This is good for the molar technique when you're not using the fingers. The molar technique is when you're using the wrist. So some exercises for that um, would be to play groups of three. First, start with the right hand. Fours. So this builds up strength in the hands. If you keep powering along playing groups of three, groups of fours, when you come to play uh, stroke, stroke rolls or roughs, the hands will already be there. So if I play four beats with this hand, I can turn that into a seven stroke roll, seven stroke rough by playing three beats with the other hand. The right hand plays four beats, the left hand plays three, making seven. 
so I'm playing from right to left. So each hand has to be equally as strong as each other. If you have a weak hand, you'll run into problems. Um, usually when you're playing the drums, the only thing the snare drum hand does is strike the drum on the downbeats. So you're not actually playing that, that amount with the left hand. So that's why you really have to practice a lot with the left hand. With the bounces, with the fingers, and with the molar technique, with the hands flush like this. If you do all those 15 minutes a day, you really notice the improvement after a while and it'll really make your playing much more enjoyable because you'll have control of this snare drum as opposed to it being this loud instrument in front of you that you know you don't want to do anything with you can actually be quite musical with it so I might just play a passage of putting all those rudiments together singles, doubles, flams, bounce triplets I'm gonna accent as well some accented ro uh, stroke rolls and roughs um, when I'm accenting stuff on the snare drum I like to get a rim shot so I like to actually plop, 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 get them out on the rim shot. You can actually hear them jump out. So I'm going to just play some stuff in the snare room using those exercises that we've done. And if you watch the fingers, how they change, and how I manipulate the sticks to try and get the sounds we want playing off the top of the head. <laughs> 